Over 12% of people were living in poverty in the U.S. in the 1960s. Ron Adams had an alcoholic, abusive father and was raised in a very poor coal mining town in western Kentucky. But that was just the beginning of the disadvantages that Ron would face. His hope was to attend college someday. And that dream was realized and his future seemed bright when he received a full ride basketball scholarship. Unfortunately, Ron suffered a leg injury and was forced to recover at home. Once he was able, Ron's father got him a job in the coal mines to help support himself. Coal mining is considered to be one of the most dangerous occupations in the U.S. While working in the coal mines, Ron was involved in a devastating accident where his spine was crushed between 18 tons of equipment and 350 feet of earth above him, leaving him clinging to life. As the ambulance waited, the rescue workers struggled to extract Ron from more than two miles deep inside the mine. After arriving at the hospital ER, Ron was told his neck was broken, and doctors then drilled four holes into his skull for traction weights to be added. Ron was forced to lay flat in bed for 40 days while his neck fusion surgery healed and became more stable. Ron was transferred from the hospital to a rehab facility, having lost 55 pounds during that time. It was hard not to focus on the many things taken from him, things that were now gone forever. And hard to keep going when it seemed like all his hopes and dreams were gone forever as well. Ron began again. It was approximately 100 meters to the dining room area. And the first time Ron pushed it in his wheelchair, it took him nearly 45 minutes. But Ron never gave up. He relentlessly pushed forward and slowly started to get better. He continued to draw closer to Jesus as he listened over and over to the book of Matthew. Ron found hope and encouragement with the help of his nurses and family who wrote scriptures from the Bible about healing and taped them to the walls of his hospital room. He continued to listen to Bible tapes every night before bed. It wasn't long before Ron changed that 45-minute 100-meter push to the dining room to a sixth-place finish in the 100-meter dash at the National Wheelchair Games, finishing in under 30 seconds. Ron then decided he'd try a marathon. He was the only person in the competition in a wheelchair and successfully finished the 6.2-mile marathon. As he had academic success, Ron decided to push himself even further. After graduation, he decided to go to law school. Ron was one of the first three students to ever earn a JD MBA at Northern Kentucky University's Salmon P. Chase College of Law. Mr. President, I present to you the men and women who have successfully completed all requirements for the degree of Juris Doctor and who have been recommended by the faculty of Salmon P. Chase College of Law of Northern Kentucky University. Will the graduates please come forward? Walter Ronald Adams. After graduation, he opened his own law practice. Ron pushed forward despite the enormous physical limitations he was forced to deal with each day. His love for family and God's encouragement kept him trying relentlessly. Ron worked hard to build his practice, competing against well-educated, affluent people that had no physical limitations. Despite his many obstacles, after eight years, his client base grew and his business started showing real signs of success. Then, during a routine physical, Ron was knocked down once again as he was diagnosed with a rare brain tumor in 1995. After 18 hours of surgery and several hours on life support, Ron pulled through. This acoustic neuroma brain tumor forced Ron to stop practicing law. Ron keeps trying. While at home recovering, Ron, always trying to better understand and motivate himself, 
starts taking classes on motivation from the Zig Ziglar company. It was more difficult than ever to cope with the new physical and mental issues from the brain tumor, especially when added to the existing quadriplegia. Now, nearly his entire body has significant limitations. It took everything within him to keep trying. Then, when he thought it couldn't get any worse, he starts to realize that his recovery is taking longer than he had hoped. With no income in three years, Ron and his family lose their home. As Ron struggles to make sense of why everything is so hard for him, he wonders if God is displeased with him. Not that God is causing the problems, but why do these bad things keep raining down on him? He's not a bad person. So he asks the same thing we all ask at one time or another. Why, God? I just don't know how much more I can take. With so many catastrophic events over Ron's 47-year life, how does he keep on trying? What are the odds of all this happening to one person? If anything, they show Ron Adams has achieved a statistically amazing life. Ron realizes from the numbers just how many bad things have happened to him. He searches for answers. Why does it keep happening? And what can he do to change the endless flow of bad things? He looks for guidance in the Bible and through different preachers and their teachings. As Ron sought these answers, he felt that Jesus was saying, what you do with the life I've died for you to have is totally your free will I have given you. It's all about how you believe. As Ron seeks a way to implement Jesus' plan for his life, he finds a quote that says, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more, nothing less. But the issue remained. How do you change a lifetime of thinking and believing poorly about yourself? Then Pastor Joel taught him a sermon on John 10.10, 10, which states that a thief comes to kill and steal and destroy, but Jesus came so that you might have life more abundantly. For the first time, Ron felt that he finally understood what God was saying to him, that Jesus came not just for salvation, but a tremendous price was paid so that we could have some heaven on the way to heaven. Resilience is a trait that Ron embodies. Despite the obstacles set before him, Ron managed to transition from a coal miner and various disabilities to be sworn into the Supreme Court of the United States, one of the highest honors an attorney can receive. Too many people want to blame God for their problems, but it's not about God. It's up to us what we do with the life we've been given. It doesn't matter how many steps you have to climb, you just keep your head up and you climb the next step and then the next step and the next step relentlessly. After implementing these truths over the next eight years, Ron's law firm now ranks as one of the most successful in Northern Kentucky. Read how he did it with Jesus guidance in Ron Adams upcoming book. Follow along as he overcomes unimaginable odds. From tragedy to triumph, be inspired to achieve success from God, just as Ron did.